Hi, I'm Andrew. I was born in Brooklyn in a wealthy family. I'm the only child. I have always been spoiled by my parents and grandparents. We had a gorgeous house with a swimming pool. My father had his own boat, and I had my own personal driver. My mother and I often traveled abroad, and it seemed to me that this is how things were. What were the other options? We had servants in the house because my mother and father worked together. They had their own business. I studied at a local expensive school. I had a lot of friends and I was never deprived of attention. My favorite way to spend time was extreme sports. I just loved to go hiking, parachute jumping, snowboarding, or skiing in winter. I was a big fan of spontaneous trips to Las Vegas. My parents often spoiled me. Maybe because I was a long-awaited child and, as I said, the only one. I didn't know what a difficult life meant until I faced it myself. Long story short, people like my parents had many friends, but even more, enemies, who liked to mess with their business. And once it got so out of hand that almost erased the work of their lifetime, this affected both the mental health of my parents and their income. They had to take emergency measures to save their business. What a surprise it was when we found out who the enemy was. My father's own younger brother. He was always complained that my father was more successful and wealthier than he was. I heard about it by chance from the conversations of my parents. Of course, the idea of him made me angry. That evening, I gathered my boys and went to the house of my beloved uncle. He was not at home, but there was his son, my cousin Charlie. I ran into him with ambition and fight broke out. I beat up his face hard. Of course, everyone knew about it, even the local press, but this incident only added fuel to the fire. The press paying attention to all this was taken advantage of by the other enemies who ordered materials from journalists about dad's minor misconduct. The crushing began from all sides. I didn't know how to beg forgiveness for my stupid act. I was ashamed. To avoid dirt towards me, my parents decided to send me to another state for the time being, where it was quiet, calm, and no one knew who my father was. My dad rented a house for me and sent a couple of bodyguards and his assistant, Pete. They were supposed to look after me. To be honest, I didn't even know about the existence of such poor places. Well, not really poor, but for me it was poor. No pretentious clubs, no cool cars, expensive restaurants. But the most annoying thing was partying with my friends. I missed them terribly, but I understood that this was all my own fault because of my act. While my parents were saving their business, I had to stay there. I was transferred to a local school, which is where my world turned upside down. The first day at the new school was worse than I could have imagined. As soon as I went inside, the students' gazes surrounded me. Even the teachers dressed cheaper than what my pants cost. And then I realized that I was not in a fairy tale. I was very much far from it. Hey handsome, what have you lost here? This is not a fashion magazine headquarters. Get out while you can, they shouted after me. Hmm, I won't find friends here, I thought with horror. I quickly found my classroom sat down in an empty seat and exclaimed everyone. Suddenly, a girl came up. She looked like the others, but something was not right. Besides the fact that she was in all black, black jeans, a sweatshirt, sneakers, an old backpack, and chopped off nail polish, she had a butterfly in her hand. I'm not talking about the insect now. A butterfly is a small type of knife. She put it to my throat and said, this is my spot. I immediately jumped from the chair and she moved her foot and tripped me. I fell to the floor with a crash and everyone began to laugh. Pissed me off so much. I got up and could hardly restrain the desire to smack her in the face properly. But it's a pity that she was a girl. The teacher immediately came in and said to take the seats. Unfortunately, my seat was next to her. Frida was what they called her. Only later did I realize that they called her that because she could draw anything on someone's face with her knife. During the class, Frida looked at me with a, with a piercing gaze. To be honest, it made me uncomfortable. After the lessons, I went up to talk to her. I wanted to put her in her place because no one dared to treat me like that. And that was another mistake. Her impudent face, ambition, and even just her walk suggested that I would be out of luck now. In front of her friends, the thugs, she pushed me against the wall, holding me by the throat, while another person took my iPhone out of my pants and said that it was now hers. I wanted to take the phone back, but her thugs suddenly appeared. Damn it, I shouted and went home. I don't even know which suffered more, my phone or my vanity. First of all, I called my parents and complained about the school, the area, the city itself, the new home, everything. 
My parents told me to call security next time, but they explained that I could not go back to Brooklyn because of the situation remained tense. Then I realized that I had no choice. So I would have to continue the war. If I didn't want to be a loser, I have to act. I said to myself. The next day, I returned to school where I was greeted with the same sidelong glances. I saw Frida and definitely sat in her spot in front of her. You have problems? I asked her thugs, but she said that she would figure it out herself. She threw my textbooks off the table and then turned to me. Handsome, I see you're tired of living, she asked. I said that I would sit wherever I wanted and she, until she gave my phone back. She laughed out loudly and pulled out the butterfly again. Then I pulled out a shocker and said that I would not mind the fact that she was a girl. You're not a girl at all, I said. She kicked me between the legs with her heavy boots, which made me bent in half. There was laughter in the class again and the teacher entered. My face turned red from pain. I couldn't even breathe. In my next class, I asked to go to the toilet and found her locker. I threw a note with a warning there. Either she returns my phone and we politely ignore each other, or there will be a war. She replied to me with, screw you. Okay, uh, I got it. From that moment on, I was building a series of ideas for revenge. When Frida went to the toilet, I very quietly followed her and put a rat in her backpack while she didn't see. Her squeals were heard by the whole school. Then I found out who she had dated before, paid her ex, and he sold me a couple of intimate photos with her. I distributed them in school. Of course, I did everything carefully, so no one would know it was actually me. The girl was furious, but she could not help it. I simply denied that it was me. I had a good alibi for each time. Frida took revenge on the sly, spoiled my things, figured out my home address and scratched my car, broke the windows in my house at night, threw eggs at it. We did nasty things to each other every day, seven days a week, and then she crossed all the boundaries. The enraged girl planted some homemade explosives on the doorstep of my home, wrote get out on the door and set it on fire. The substance exploded. It was not a big explosion, of course, but it scared my housekeeper who was with me since I was an infant. She was hurt and I had to call an ambulance. Being outraged, I found out Frida's address and went over to her. That area was like a real ghetto. I've only seen such people on TV before. It was a neglected multi-story building. And on the first floor, a filthy, smelly hallway. A girl was running around with an iPhone like mine. I asked her how I could find Frida, and she said that she was her sister. Then, I realized that it was my phone. When I opened the door of the apartment, I could smell the stale smell of an unventilated room, fumes and something else. I accidentally heard the familiar voice of Frida, who was shouting something to a man standing opposite her. I hid behind the door from the shouting. I understood that it was her father. If you once again raise your hand on my little sister, you will regret it. Understand? If mother were alive, she would not allow any of this, she shouted. Suddenly, she went to the door. I did not have time to hide when she saw me and got frightened, surprised and shy. Everything happened in a moment. Her drunk father immediately came out. When he saw me, he called her a girl of easy virtue. Frida looked at him with painful eyes. He grabbed her by the hair. Then, when I could no longer stand back and watch, I hit him on the nose. He began to shout that I was such and such, but I suddenly took her sister by the hand and went into the street. She followed us. What do you want? Get out, she shouted. And I put them in a car and took them to a cafe where I ordered delicious food for her little sister. Something in me turned over at that moment. It was as if I felt sorry for her. The first half hour, it was impossible to talk to her. She was constantly mischievous, snarled, told me nasty things and said that I simply wanted to help. When she asked why, I replied that I did not know. And it was true. My opinion about her changed. It seems to me that this tough girl had no compassion. But when I saw her stand up for her sister and that she had taken my phone but gave it to her, made me reconsider my original feelings for her. That time we had a heart-to-heart -heart talk for the first time. Since that day, neither she nor her friend group had touched me. I became like everyone else, except that I still wore expensive clothing, but otherwise I merged with all the kids. Over time, I got used to this school, but the truce with Frida got boring at one point. I found out that her sister was ill, so I came to them with a care package of meds, 
toys and sweets. I wanted to cheer her up. It's good that their dad was not at home. Then I saw Frida for the first time in colored pajamas and not in black clothes. We ate pizza and watched cartoons. That evening we talked with the thug girl until every morning. That evening we talked with the thug girl until early morning. Well, then I made up my mind and asked her out on a date. After a couple of weeks, we started dating. Crazy, right? My girlfriend is a thug. She taught me how to manage money and my expenses, and I taught her manners. After about a year, my parents said that I could move back to Brooklyn, but I suddenly realized that I was fine here too. Friends, if you like the story, then give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.